We want you to be your fullest potential. <laughs> Go get it, Rock. They talk to me. <laughs> they talk to you. Oh, Jesus. My camera's falling apart. Yeah, this rock was talking to me. It actually said, can you please stand me to my fullest potential? <laughs> What's nice about waterfalls is they're visible from about 170 degrees. So we don't necessarily have to aim it right at the house to be able to see it. Even if I aim it this way, you'll still catch the profile of it. What's interesting is I've never in my life heard anybody say it's visible from 170 degrees. But where are. did you come up with that? I measured it. You thought you were you such a liar. You, you didn't measure anything. Like this. Ed told There's no that. way. It's not, it's not 170. See it from the side. It, it might be but 190 right, right degrees. Here at 170. <laughs> yeah. That sounds. Like I don't. I don't buy that. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Can you see it from 170 degrees? I don't think so. I think it's more than that. No. Yeah, it's 100 percent more. Let's go build a waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so it's the morning of day two. There's not a whole lot that's gonna happen today. Actually, I take that back. A whole lot will happen today. Not a whole lot that I need to share with you guys. We're basically just gonna start rocking in the pond. You can see Jack's starting to bring some rock from the front of the house, getting them back here. That way we just have a selection and we can go, 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 go. If we can get those rocks staged really close back here and have a huge pile, it just makes things that much more efficient. So today's goal, hopefully gets about 90% of this pond rocked in. Things that are gonna slow us down are areas is like over here where I want to cut pull the liner back cut some boulders back in and carve those things into place the other challenge we have is it's really one rock at a time we've only got the access from the side of the house over here Jack can bring back maybe 10 15 rocks get a nice pile of here we're gonna put some gravel over here and then hopefully we can keep the three of us busy all day long so watch the progress let's see how far we get So it looks like an enormous amount of rock, but by the time we start adding a couple accent boulders here and there, we're gonna start going through this stuff actually pretty quick. The other important thing is, we gotta make sure we don't use all of our nice rocks, some of these big boys, in the pond. We still have a waterfall to build, we still have retaining walls to build, and we wanna make sure we kinda space these things out so we don't have all of the big stuff just in the pond and then nothing left to do the waterfall in the stream. What we're looking for today, at least to start out, Brian, is some stuff we can stand up, right? And that's why we're strapping this like this. Yeah. This rock's gonna look so much better standing up. You know, this is the bottom, this is the top, and this may be the face or the other side may be the face. And it's not necessarily that it's gonna look better that way. You could 100% use this rock as what we would call a destination boulder, a rock that invites you to walk up on top of it. But we need to get vertical quick in a lot of these different spots in the pond. And we start laying them all flat, we would use twice the amount of stone. So we're just trying to take up surface area right now. Not surface area as much as, yeah, no, we'll call it surface area. We'll call it the vertical wall in the pond. <laughs> we're gonna do this probably several times a day. Try to take some of these guys and get them to their fullest potential. We want you to be your fullest potential. <laughs> Go get it, Rock. They talk to me. <laughs> they talk to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> My camera's falling apart. Yeah, this Rock was talking to me. It actually said, can you please stand me to my fullest potential? <laughs>
say this all the time, but this literally is my favorite part. I think it's your favorite part too, right? Building the waterfalls? Yeah. yeah. Taking Route. holes for the ponds is like super exciting. Yeah. But not even half as exciting as the waterfall. I love the shape of the pond, but the waterfall, that's where the, that's where everybody looks, right? They come out in the backyard and look through the window. It's like they see that water cascading. That's why it's probably the most important part of the job. You can see where our waterfalls is gonna start all the way up here by the biofalls. The key with this waterfall is really to twist and turn it and drop it in as many different angles as we can so we avoid that staircase look that we all hate so much, including you guys. So this waterfall, if we can start dropping it almost on a 45 to the house, what's nice about waterfalls is they're visible from about 170 degrees. So we don't necessarily have to aim it right at the house to be able to see it. Even if I aim it this way, you'll still catch the pro profile of it. That's going to allow us then to put in a pool back behind this and then get a waterfall coming into that pool on a different angle. Here we've taken this big giant rock, sloped it in. The idea is when this water drops this way, this rock will cause that water to move out like that. We'll put another rock here, really narrowing this down quite a bit in here, probably to only 12, 15 inches wide. That's gonna help force the water out of here, which really accelerates that flow that we need and pushes all the debris out of here and over into our intake bay that way. So hopefully the rocks have the same vision we do, because if they don't, then it's kind of a nightmare. What's interesting is I've never in my life heard anybody say it's visible from 170 degrees. But where did you come up with that? I measured it. You you were you such a liar. You, you didn't measure at anything. Like this. Ed told There's me no that. way. 70? It's not. It's, it's not you 170. You can't see it from the side. It, it might be but 190 right, right degrees. Here at 170. <laughs> yeah. That sounds. Like I don't. I don't buy that. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Can you see it from 170 degrees? I don't think so. I think it's more than that. No. Yeah, it's 100 percent more. Let's go build a waterfall. <laughs> just about the end of day two and I'm pretty happy with how far we got. Rocking in the bottom of the pond always goes pretty fast. That upper level always takes considerably more time because it's the part that's very visible, right? So we want to make sure all the rocks fit in there just right. We're checking water level, making sure things are either above water level or just below. If we've got little beachy type areas and that kind of stuff. So not only did we finish rocking in most of the pond, we actually started doing some edge work and we're moving up into the waterfall. So here's what we got done. So far if you can remember this morning it was really just some bottom rocks down and through there so we set all of these upper ones up in through here we've got some frame rocks and a waterfall back up in there they're working on that upper pool we got a bunch of these guys set we got some of our peninsula rocks in here this is gonna be the main viewing area from this whole pond and it looks pretty good from over here like I love the way this is all turning out not that you can really tell what's going on all that hose and stuff you see we have aerators down in the bottom so we actually have an aerator right there with a the light shining up it it looks so cool when that wall of bubbles comes up and the light coming right up through it it kind of illuminates this whole area which looks really good so we got a light down there we've got an aerator we've got our air hoses run back behind it this will help ultimately push a bunch of stuff out of here you can also see we've got some jet hoses in here so there's one there there's gonna be another one right there we've got one down in the bottom which will We'll cut away when we're ready and then we've got another aerator back there so three jets some aerators pushing everything out of this cove and then we've got this spot up in here so Jack and Ralph tell me what we're doing in this area would you guys like to hear a little pro tip on how we do things yes yes that's how we do stuff in Atlantis Water Garden <laughs> come, in, come in here Josh okay so what I'm doing here 
is we have all of our liner sandwich here. We've got the liner that's gonna be for this section of waterfall, which goes over the top and down into our pond liner. Our pond liner comes up and we've got all this fabric. Now, that's a lot of material to fold back. What I like to do is once we backfill everything to the height that we want, I go through and I actually cut out on like a 45 down a couple inches so that when we pull everything back, it'll lay down nice on the dirt. If we left all the dirt back right up against the edge of the liner, you end up with like a weird fold or a hump here. It makes it difficult because sometimes that can actually pop through the gravel. And you ever see those waterfalls where there's like liner popping out? We don't like that kind of stuff. So we want this stuff to lay no, down. No, no, no. That's why we're carving an extra little ditch, I guess, here. Make sure that it all lays down. Once we're done with this, we'll make sure we're all good here. No rocks, no gravel. Our rock pad comes down, super heavy duty stuff. And then we can get started on the next section. One of the things we'd like to do, Brian, is over excavate, right? Yep. Because we're working with big rocks. So we've got these giant rocks. This is a nice big, like thousand pound boulder. We're gonna take this guy and use it somewhere in this vicinity. We're not exactly sure where, because we're gonna be standing over there looking to see how it works out spatially. We wanna make sure the viewing area looks good. It's not blocking anything. So giving ourselves some extra space to work with. We're not necessarily coming all the way out to here with the waterfall, but having it dug out where we're not trying to put a rock in and then pull the liner back and all this back and forth nonsense, we could put everything in, then we could pull everything up, backfill it like we did with this, and it's just much faster and it's much more fun now. It's way more fun rather than folding that liner back and forth, back and forth because yeah. it didn't fit in just right. This is, this is hard enough work. Ralph, I also noticed that you've got this pool here a little bit lower than what our weir stone would be. Why do we do that? Yeah, so what we want to do is have a natural deep pool. So so as that water comes over, you don't want it to splash down into a shallow creek and see all those rocks real shallow. So having a deeper pool, having that slope back like this, it allows there to be more water in here. And that's a cool spot for plants and things like that. Because what happens in mother nature? Right? I'll tell you what happens in mother nature. Erosion. Or a pondscapes AZ. Hey, hey, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It happens there too. Pro tip. <laughs> There's your pro tip for today. All right. all right, let's fold this back. Let's, uh, I say we set our frame rocks in here or our rock oh you're not feeling motivated are you it's 10 after 5 i mean we did a lot today <laughs> we did Is get that a five o'clock rock <laughs> yeah we don't do five o'clock rocks here <laughs> we it doesn't work five o'clock rock turns into 9 a.m rock that we take back out so let's just not even do it let's get the liner back wrap our tools up go enjoy some dinner each other's company and have a great time tonight <laughs> 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 well, I think that's a good time to cut. <laughs> when we start hugging each other at five o'clock, you know it's probably time to go home. Well, hey, that's the end of day two. We got a ton done. Wait till you see what we do tomorrow. Bye.